Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos. And today I'm super excited because we're making these gorgeous baby doll dresses. If you guys are interested, you can purchase the pattern and instruction pamphlet for these dresses through my Etsy. And that is the first link down below. However, if you are interested in patterning this yourself, I'm going to have a video explaining that whole process up on my TikTok and maybe IGTV, we'll see. But I did not do any draping for this dress. All I did was flat patterning and I worked from a bodice block and skirt blocks for this. So as you saw from the video, this dress is obviously three tiers for the skirt. This dress is only two tiers and you can definitely decide how many tiers you want on this skirt. You can do one, two, or three tiers for this skirt. That's up to you. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. What I love about this dress though is that it is super beginner friendly because of the fabric that I recommend that you work with. I made both of these dresses out of plain weave 100% cotton, literally the easiest fabric that you can work with, hands down. I would say that this dress is more beginner intermediate because of all of the gathers and the sleeves, but because we're working with such an easy fabric, it definitely makes it a little bit more beginner friendly. Definitely comment down below how you envision this dress so that we can all give each other some ideas. Tell me what fabrics, what colors, what patterns you would use for this dress. Oh, and I do have a special surprise for you guys. So I do wanna reward those of you who are subscribed and have notifications on for my channel and who are watching this video immediately immediately after I've posted it. So what I'm going to do to reward you guys is give you a little discount for this particular pattern. So if you would like to get this pattern for 30% off, you can use the code BABYDOLL when you check out on Etsy. And this is going to be active for almost two days. It's gonna stop being active tomorrow at midnight Eastern time, which is my time zone. Yeah, so I think that is everything. Let's just get into the tutorial. Okay, so first off, I've printed out my pattern at 100% scale. And before you print your pattern, make sure you have read the instructions and you read this warning right here on the first page of all of the patterns. Basically, it just says that this pattern uses a lot of pieces of paper because of the tears in the skirt. So if you wanna conserve paper, you can cut it out using the measurements provided in the instruction pamphlet. I'm now placing my pieces of paper right up against each other, making sure to not overlap them. And I'm lining them up based off of the letters and numbers in each diamond. And then I'm just taping that together. After referring to the size chart in your instruction pamphlet to figure out what size you are, cut on the corresponding line. I'm choosing to cut out a US size two. Now just cut out the rest of your pattern pieces and remember you do not have to print and cut out the tiers of your skirt if you wanna just cut those out based off of the measurements. I've printed out the first tier here so you can see how it looks. And if you wanna make your skirt two tiers instead of three tiers, I've indicated how much you should lengthen the first and second tiers on the pattern piece and in the instruction pamphlet. And here I just wanna show you guys how I would cut out the tiers if I was not using the pattern piece. So I just snip into the fabric based off of the measurements and then tear it. This gives you an incredibly straight line, but it can only be done with certain woven fabric. So if you're using something like a knit, then you will not be able to do it. So just test it out beforehand. For the other pattern pieces though, I'm just using the pattern and cutting those out with a rotary cutter. And make sure that you pay attention to the little triangles on your bodice piece in the sleeve, don't forget to notch those. Lastly, I'm just cutting out my interfacing and then I'm ready to sew. Okay, so starting off, we're gonna grab our two back bodice pieces and flip them so the wrong side is facing up. Then we're going to grab our interfacing pieces made for the center back bodice and place them there and then just iron them on. After that, we're going to fold the interfacing piece twice. We're gonna fold it in half, and then we're gonna fold it one more time and give it a good press so it ends up looking like how this piece does on the right. And to secure this, I'm going to sew straight down this open edge. This is how it should look like at the end and you'll have two very stable plackets. So now it's time to go ahead and tackle the buttonholes. I'm choosing to use four 11 millimeter buttons and I'm going to space them out 2.5 inches apart. However, you can use whatever size button you want as long as it fits within that one inch placket and you can also space them out however you want. So if you wanna put six buttons, you can definitely do that. As long as you make sure you space them out evenly and leave enough seam allowance on the bottom for attaching the skirt and at the top for attaching the neckline binding. Now I'm just using my sewing machine to create four vertical buttonholes, and then I'm just using my seam ripper to open up those buttonholes. 
You can totally attach the buttons to the other bodice piece now, but I'm going to wait until the very end so that there's not any unnecessary bulk while I'm trying to sew this dress. Now I'm going to sew the bodice together, but before I do that, I'm going to serge the shoulder seams and the side seams of the bodice. I'm finishing the seam allowance before I sew most of my seams just because I want to press open my seams so that I can reduce the bulk. However, you can finish your seam allowance however you personally like, and I'm only doing this at seams where there will not be gathers. For the seams that have gathers, I'm going to serge those after I sew them. Now I'm placing the bodice pieces right sides together and I'm going to sew along the shoulder seams and along the side seams. Then I'm going to take it over to my ironing board and just press those seams open. Moving on to the sleeves, I'm going to finish the inseam of the sleeve beforehand using my serger, and then I'm going to sew that seam together, and then of course I'm going to give it a good press with my iron. Now it's time to create the gathers at the sleeve cap. To do this, I'm going to sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance between the front and back notches at the sleeve cap. Now it's time to insert the sleeve. So I have the bodice of my dress turned inside out and I'm gonna turn the sleeve right side out. This way I can easily insert it into the arm's eye and have the right sides of the fabrics facing each other. So now I wanna walk you guys through how to evenly gather something. So first off, I'm going to pin my sleeve together at the inseam, at the front notches, at the back notches, and at that shoulder seam notch. So since we sewed two rows of basting stitches, we'll have two threads on each side that we'll be able to pull and gather. I'm going to pull on the bobbin thread so that it creates these little ripples, these little gathers, and just kind of space them out up until I reach the shoulder seam. Then I'm going to repeat this exact same process on the other side. Our goal is to get the sleeve cap to fit into the arm size, so we need the gathers to be the same length as the arm size, so that's our goal. Once we get it to the same length, I'm going to tie off our two pieces of bobbin thread so that it does not go anywhere while I'm trying to space out these gathers. I'm taking my time when spacing out the gathers to make sure that it's really evenly gathered around the entire sleeve cap so you don't have any weird spots of fullness. After I've spaced out my gathers, I'm just pinning everything in place so that it doesn't move around while I'm trying to sew. And then I'm just gonna bring this over to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew around this entire arm's eye. And I want you guys to know that gathers can be super easy to achieve. However, they can be a little bit tedious, so just take your time and as long as you do that, they will come out looking good. And after I sew this seam, I'm just going to serge it to finish it. I'm serging this after and not before because this will reduce the bulk of the gathers. Now it's time to sew on the sleeve cuffs. So first off, I'm gonna flip them to have the wrong side facing up and I'm going to place my interfacing on there and then just fuse it together with my iron. I'm gonna fold the cuffs right sides together and sew along the short edge, but before I do that, I'm going to serge first to finish it then I'm gonna sew. Again, doesn't really matter how you do it. This is just how I'm choosing to do it. And then of course, I'm gonna take it over to my iron and press that seam open. Then I'm going to fold the cuff again in half so that the interfacing is on the inside and the right sides are facing out. And I'm just gonna take my iron to crease that so it looks like a cuff. Now I'm gonna go back to the actual sleeve and sew two rows of basting stitches around the sleeve opening so that it can be gathered and fit into the sleeve cuff. And we're going to use the exact same gathering technique that we used on the sleeve cap, so I'm not gonna really go too much in depth because I just fully explained how to gather. So just do the exact same thing, take it slowly, and then it should turn out all right. After that, bring it over to your sewing machine, sew it, and then serge it, and then you have yourself some cuffs. Now it's time to sew the bias tape binding around the neckline. So I've recommended that you guys pick up some pre-made bias tape like this. This is double fold quarter inch bias tape. If you feel comfortable making your own bias tape, you can totally do that. Just cut out a strip a little longer than your neckline and an inch wide and iron it into quarters. To attach the bias tape, you're going to open up the bias tape and place it right sides together to the neckline. And you're just gonna sew in that first crease closest to the edge. I'm also going to leave about an inch of excess bias tape at the beginning and end of the neckline. To finish these ends, I'm just gonna fold them to the other side of the dress and then again, stitch in that first crease to secure it down. After that, I'm just gonna fold the bias tape all the way back up into its quarters. It should enclose the neckline seam allowance inside of it. And then I'm just going to stitch in the ditch, meaning I'm gonna 
stitch in that neckline seam so that stitch will be invisible and I'll make sure to catch the bias tape on the back side of the neckline so it stays secured. So now moving on to the tiers of the skirt, this is where it gets exciting. It's where it starts turning into a dress. So I'm gonna work on tier one, first of all, and I'm going to first serge the side seams before sewing the side seams together, sewing the tiers right sides together. Then after I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and press it nice and flat with my iron. Before I can sew tier one to the bodice, however, I need to flip over the bodice and close that center back seam by just placing the button hole plackets over the button side plackets and then just tacking right in the seam allowance at that bottom of the center back seam. This will just keep the bodice in place while you're sewing the skirt on so it doesn't move around and it just makes it a lot easier. Now I'm going to sew two rows of basting stitches in the seam allowance at the top of skirt tier one. And of course, we are going to use these basting stitches again to create the gathers. Like I said before, I already went through the whole gathering process, so I'm using the same exact gathering technique. I'm just grabbing the two bobbin threads, I'm pulling, I'm evening out the gathers, and then I'm going to pin it in place, and then sew it with my sewing machine, and then finally serge it. So I'll just let you guys watch this process so you can see it happen again. After that, you are going to repeat the exact same process with the second tier and then also the third tier. Now we're almost done. I'm just going to hem this dress. You can see I've already done it in this clip. We have a one inch hem allowance, so I'm going to fold it half an inch twice and then I'm just gonna stitch it down. Then lastly, we just need to sew our buttons on. I'm using pins and Taylor's chalk to mark exactly where I want to place my buttons. And after you've marked it, you are ready to go ahead and sew on your buttons. So after you sew your buttons on, you are done and you have yourself a brand new gorgeous baby doll dress. Right, guys so that is how you make this baby doll dress let me know down below which of these two dresses was your favorite i definitely love how this beautiful rose print goes with like the romantic style of the dress however i love the juxtaposition between this like edgy quirky fabric and the feminine silhouette so i definitely like this one a little bit more let me know which one you guys like also while you're still here let me know down below what kind of patterns you want to see from me in the future because it's august it's still really hot but it's the end of summer so i'm not sure if i should do more summer patterns or if i should start transitioning into fall so let me know if you like this video feel free to give me a thumbs up it is the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free also feel free to follow me on instagram and tiktok my handle is kiana bonolo also subscribe turn on that notification bell it would mean the world to me if you stuck around for a while and yeah so i think that is everything thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you next time bye